wanted to start by asking you about your research on two-parent families and cognitive yeah. stimulation and early learning. Can you tell me a little bit about the research which you and your colleagues were looking to identify? We wanted to see how much um, how much help kids get at home and when they get help from you know support learning support from both parents how does that um, uh, help children learn when they're also getting support from the child care providers. So it was a, it's a really, it was a look at the whole ecology of caregiving. How many adults are in the children's lives, especially in two-parent families, because we know that dads are at home and they're reading to the children, they're playing with them, so that has to have an impact on how they learn and develop. How many families? This is a study based on a longitudinal um, national data set, so it's quite large. It's about 1,200 families uh, with mom and dad and a child care provider. So both mom and dad and the child and care the provider. Right, right. So um, it was important for us to be able to get a picture of how all these adults who are supporting the child's learning are interacting with one another to help the child learn. About what ages? We started at 24 months all the way to 60 months. What did you find? It was uh, very interesting, actually. What we found is that when children are supported by two parents at home, by parents at home, they tend to do better at school than when children are supported by uh, low levels of stimulation from both parents. So that having, um, having parents at home who are reading to them and playing with them, it's really important for the kids' um, math and early, la early language skills. Was it in particular reading? Uh, what kinds of stimulation are we talking about? Because it's a large study, the measures are not very in-depth, but these are self-report measures by parents on how often they read to the child, um, how often they sing to the child, how often they tell stories at home. So very, what we call informal learning experiences at home. They're not sitting down the child and teaching something. They're just, you know, interacting, reading, singing, telling stories. How does COVID factor into this now? We didn't look at that in this study, but I think the children who are not um, in childcare, they are missing out on some experiences, um, but it's, it's not a gloom and doom scenario. It depends on what parents are doing at home. You know, um, if they're getting um, high levels of stimulation from adults or grandma or older siblings, I think they're going to be fine. It's just that when the children are not getting uh, a lot of stimulation from, an, uh, from a lot of adults, they may not benefit from each other's stimulation. What, what are some things that, kid, that parents you know, can do? I think most parents think, oh my goodness, I don't have time to teach my child to read. To These are just things that you would do every day. You know, maybe you're reading the newspaper out loud. Maybe you're reading the comics. Maybe you're singing. And we have a lot of musical parents who love to sing and to dance, and children are picking up uh, language, uh, songs rhyme beautifully. Uh, storytelling, not necessarily structured storytelling. Let me tell you a story when you were little. Let me tell you a story about when I was growing up. So any, any language, any communication that parents have with the children is really rich with words, with uh, storytelling, ideas that children pick up and try to repeat and emulate, and so language is very much stimulated in that way. Was there any measure, Natasha, to what impact that strong language skill, the storytelling and everything that's going on at home, what kind of an impact did it have? We were very, very surprised in a way that this particular, this type of informal stimulation from dads had a really, was very strongly related to children's math skills. So what we think um, that's happening is that dads, when they're reading a story or a book, they're saying, hey, three more pages to go and then you're done. Let's count how many ducks are on the page. Um, what comes next? Things like that that stimulate math. Uh, talk from kids. So fathers in particular are very good at using math talk to um, to read the stories, to tell, you know, point out counting and uh, spatial relations between objects that really helps children to understand mathematical concepts. Did you find on the flip side that moms had more of an impact with reading or no? No, the dad, it was dads had, mom, mom's impact was really uh, in combination with the child care provider. So when the mom and the child care provider were stimulating the child um, at the same levels, the child's language skills and math skills tend to improve, but not by themselves. It was really dad that was doing more of that, you know, 
maybe the quality of the input was a little higher for dads than it was for moms. Maybe they were doing it longer, things that we couldn't measure um, in the study. But um, it, and we found this effect from other studies as well, that when fathers are using language and storytelling and reading and singing, they may be in some way using more math talk. And that is sort of what we want to do next time, figure out why, what those dads are doing. Now, when you mentioned child care provider, could that be a formal setting or could that be a friend or a relative, grandma or grandpa who's watching? Yes, that could, in this case, it was child care providers at a child care center, but it really could be anyone that sustains, that uh, providing a stimulation in a sustained way. You know, um, yeah, a, a grandmother or a family relative who is providing care. As long as children are really being stimulated in these two environments, whatever they might be, with whoever they might be, um, I think it's really beneficial for them. They tend to benefit more when there are more sources of stimulation than when just one. You and your colleagues have studied uh, the impact of dad and the impact of that two-parent family. What does that additional piece of having the caregiver what does that bring to the situation? What it tells us, I think, is that children who have more sources of stimulation do maybe perhaps better than children who may be exposed only to one. Um, in single parent homes, it's not the mom is not providing care. It may be that she's more stressed out or she's doing more things. So there's less time to spend reading and other studies have found this too. Um, so that when a child uh, has only one adult, that adult has to do everything. So the more, the merrier, in a way. Is there anything else that you could suggest for parents? One thing that was really important in the findings that, um, that we just talked about is that early is better, the timing. When these kids were stimulated at 24 months, just at the time when they're picking up language, when they're using gestures and sounds to make themselves understood, when children getting a lot of stimulation at that age, they tended to have better scores at 48 months and at 60 months. So I would emphasize the early is better. Nine months, 24 months, as young as you can, I expose children to language, to words, to anything that has communicative meaning, that, has, um, that gives them the experience and the opportunity to ask questions, to understand what are you talking about, what is that, is that a ball, is that a you know, so I think the early the better. Is there a, a golden number? Is there a certain amount of time that seems to work best or is it just consistency? You know, it, this is a magic number. We don't know, you know, how, I think we know the other end, how little is little. If you, children who are stimulated a lot, maybe reading less than three times a week might be considered kind of, um, kind of low. In this study, we looked at more, meaning more than three or four times a week. So when you're doing it like, daily, at least once a day, uh, when the child is hearing a story or a song or being directly um, read to, I think that is what we call a high level of stimulation. And you know, there's a whole gamma, some parents do it very few times a week and other parents will do it every day, but I think every day it's not really an unusual or unreasonable request, especially for a child that's so curious and asking questions all the time. Um, Parents always tell me, you know, I'm reading because the child is just wanting me to read this. What does it say here? What, you know, tell me what the story says. So they're very curious. So you take advantage of that opportunity and just read to them as often as you can, at least once a day. Is there, again, anything else that I did not ask you? What else are you and your colleagues planning on looking yeah. at? We were looking for this compensatory effect, you know, for the idea that if one, if the child is getting highly stimula stimulated in one environment and not getting uh, stimulation in the other, would that make a difference? Would that help that child? learn what we found is that the stimulation is very specific to the caregiver. Dads play a role, an important role, and they're not easy to substitute. Um, it's specific to math and, 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 and reading as we found here for language. Children learn language from lots of from television, from talking to other people, but for those two specific skills that are really important for school success, I think it's very important to be a specific input on that specific outcome for the specific child and the specific child care provider.